Legion. The story begins. Written by Charles Swain. Narrated by Sean Anthony. Chapter 3. With a smile, I looked up and grinned. My comrades were completely still and silent. Maybe they were in awe, impressed by the magnitude of my power. The blade stopped, and I walked around it. Come on, we're wasting time. Let's head back to the lab. I don't want to go anywhere with you. Sophie shouted. What are you saying? You know what I'm saying. You fucked up. I told you one more murder would be the last straw, but you didn't listen. I'm out. It's over. You understand? I'm done. She tried to walk away, but I cut her off at the pass. You aren't going to break up the pact. Out of my way, Legion. Don't divide us. What is it you don't understand, eh? Humans are evil by nature. An evil that must be destroyed. You only know one side. It's the only side I need to know. You're too damn pessimistic. The world around you is going to close in because all you see is death, misery, and destruction. Will your bloodlust not stop until all of us are dead? Sophie. I'm done talking. Out of my way. Sophie, don't go. Give me one good reason. Damn it, Sophie! I can't do this without you, any of you! I was going to have to BS my way out of it. I knew in my heart that I was right, but my comrades were slow to learn. I understood then. It didn't matter how much I explained. They'd never understand. If I wanted my friends safe, I'd have to deceive them a little bit. Sophie stared me down, as if she wanted more of an explanation. Look, I didn't want things to go this way. We can't just let every human we come across follow along. At some point, they're going to backstab us. We've suffered enough. I don't want to see any of you hurt anymore. I didn't notice till then that James still had his gun drawn on me. I wished he'd tried to fire. Last move that son of a bitch would make. You want to make a move? I shouted. I can't take it anymore! You killed all my friends! They're gone, and they didn't mean a damn thing to you! They had lives! They had families! Now you have a taste of what I've gone through. Shit like this happens to me every day. What does that have to do with me? You spawn the evil. No, the evil one is the Siberian Husky who's about to get a bullet between the eyes. I grinned and stepped forward, looking to Sophie, Noah, and Hatch. The human says we're evil. He admits that they despise our kind. I repeated the same thing to James so that he understood, loud and clear. I have a dog of my own, he lashed back. I actually like canines. I even like your friends. I just hate you. What the hell was he going on about? I was really starting to get pissed off. They were with me the whole time. From what I have seen, you're the only one that has done any senseless killing. I only aim to end you. Get on with it then. I bow to no human. Show us the evil you carry in your heart. My comrades did something that shocked me. All three stepped in front of the man. As if shielding me, they stared at James with their ears lowered. Out of my way, said James, but my comrades didn't move a muscle. After a few moments, the man lowered his gun. All was quiet. James paced back and forth and then took a seat. The bright beam in the sky moved down and it looked as good of a spot as any to rest. What's your game now? I said. Cooking. Been with you guys for a day and a half and I'm starving. He took out a metal can of some sort and then used a knife to cut open the top. What the hell is that? What is this, 101 questions? It's beef stew. 
the concoction of carrots and celery, beef and corn, looked simply scrumptious. What about us? Oh, hell no! I'm the one that's being held hostage here! You have to get your own food! I've listened to you guys, but you're pushing me to the breaking point! We stared down at the food, occasionally looking back up at him. I don't even have enough food for all of you. Would you rather we all starve? I couldn't remember the last time I'd eaten anything. My comrades looked at him, disappointed and sad. Hey, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have enough food. If I did, I would share it with you. Before James got another word out, both Hatch and Sophie ran off into the woods. I kept my eyes on James, who seemed as if he might try to break free the first moment he got. Sophie and Hatch couldn't have been gone more than five minutes. The golden retriever returned with five small animals. The fox terrier had the same amount, but his animals were different. Oh, you actually caught something, James said under his breath in an almost disappointing tone. What are these? I asked Hatch. What are these? Only the most delicious food in the world. Me and my old owner used to hunt for duck all the time. And what Sophie has over there is rabbit. Also very tasty, I will have you know. All of us looked to James. What? What do you want? You got your food. I think my friends want you to prepare it. Prepare? You want me to put some parsley on a plate and serve it to you or something? They still have hair. And it's not cooked. Cooked? James's jaw dropped. He got up and walked around. Oh my god, you dogs are spoiled. You never had raw food before? You're supposed to be wild animals. Whatever, fine. But you owe me. Owe you? What are you talking about? My friends that you viciously killed. I want to give them a proper burial. It's the least I can do. Are you nuts? Their bodies are decomposing as we speak. We're going back in that direction anyways. Show your respect for the dead. Respect? I'll show you- But Sophie interrupted. Right on cue, as always. What are you getting so angry about? The human wants to bury his friends. Sounds like a reasonable request. You did kill them, after all. <sighs> Let's not play this blame game. I'm not in the mood. We were all in on it. I haven't taken a single human life. In fact- Noah and Hatch haven't either. We don't kill without a good cause. Vengeance is not a good cause. Oh, bugger off, would you? I walked away and sat on the opposite side of the fire. I only wanted to hear my own thoughts. It isn't what I envisioned. Not for me, nor my comrades. At that moment, everyone grew silent. The fire was the only thing to make any noise. The log crackling as a few floating embers escaped. Almost a butterfly kind of effect before they disappeared. Sophie, after some time, sat beside me. Why do you have to question everything I do? Because you don't always think rationally. Look, we're all here for you. But you have to go about this the right way. Stop pretending like you give a damn. I do care. Yeah, sure you do. Thanks, Sophie. Great talk. You want the truth? No. Lie. Make up a story. The truth is that you've changed drastically over such a short period of time. You aren't the same Legion that gave us hope. The same one that inspired us. Sophie. In a way, you kept us alive. Talking about what we were going to do when we broke out. There was never any talk about this bloodshed. We talked about how nothing would divide the pact. We talked about our dreams. It's as if none of that matters. I still have all those ambitions. The whole point of escaping was to get away from the violence. Hatch spoke up. I'm fighting for us now so that I never have to fight again. Your method only brings more blood. The good-natured Legion I once knew would never even think about taking a life like that. What the hell am I supposed to do? The humans are never going to just let us walk. Their notion of peace is seeing us groveling at their feet. 
I don't want that for you. For any of us. There is a way. It's not this way. It can't be. We have these abilities now, and I don't think we're meant to abuse them. Take a good look at Noah. You call that a gift? They turned him into a fri- Don't you dare finish that sentence. <laughs> Sophie got up and looked at me with a fierce gaze. I looked in her direction, then back at Noah. He was the quiet one of the bunch. I wish I hadn't brought that point to light. I didn't know what made me say it. That kind of talk only seemed to bring him down. I'm sorry. I don't want to lose you guys, that's all I'm saying. We're not going anywhere. We're following you to the end. Said Sophie. We're going with you to that lab, but you have to promise to control that temper. And you cannot take any more lives, not even a human. No more lives if it means that much to all of you. I won't lose my temper anymore. I tried to give a look of resolute even though the second part of what I said was false. I was feeling angrier every day and I didn't know why. I could feel the rage festering inside. I... I thought I wanted the world to bleed. But I would try my best. I finally had my comrades trust me again and I didn't want to lose that. Nothing in the world was as powerful or meaningful than the bonds of friendship. Without it, I would be in my dark room of complete solitude. I couldn't let them know of the misery that flowed through my veins. James made good on what he said, as there was roasted rabbit and duck for everyone. And in the morning, we headed for the lab, even taking the time to help James bury the hunters. He made his peace as the last of them were placed six feet under. Must have taken the better part of the day. Out of respect, we were quiet throughout most of it, allowing James to say what he wanted to his friends in his final farewell. Then, we made our way to the lab. It was swarming with machines. We all made sure to stay hidden behind rocks and trees. Those metal beasts seemed to roar louder than ever. There were even styles I'd never seen, just bulky with a dark green decor. Is this some kind of new machine? I questioned. Jesus, Legion, that's a tank! That could blow us all up sky high! They must really want you back. So, how do we get past them? I need to know what's going on inside that building. I'll handle it, said Noah. I noticed his mechanical eye turning red. I wasn't sure if it was my friend's doing, but the tank stopped. Remember, Legion, no killing. This is a sneak-in operation. I nodded as more humans walked out to see what was wrong with the tanks. Before we walked inside the building, James got in our way. What are all you guys doing? We can't just walk in like we were invited to the party. There has to be cameras somewhere. We all looked at him. Finally, I spoke up. What's a camera? You have got to be kidding me! Okay, think of it as a lens that captures a moment in time. If we get seen by that lens, the bad guys won't know we're here! Ah, oh, I see. Didn't they ever record the experiments when they were testing you? Ah, oh, the plastic boxes! That's what you should have said in the first place! Whatever. Look, can your friend with the robotic eye manipulate cameras? Perhaps some kind of feedback loop so that it will create a distraction long enough for us to sneak by? How the hell should I know? Just ask him! I repeated the same thing that James told me to Noah. I could try, said Noah. We got close enough to spot a camera on one of the sides of the building. Noah's eyes did some kind of fancy mumbo-jumbo thing and flickered green and red. It's done. Now, all the cameras will send back a constant feedback loop. All of the cameras? I questioned. Yes, they're all linked and connected to a single source, so I was able to send the feed to all of them. How do you know this? I don't know. I just do. It's as if robotics has its own separate language. I can understand all of it. 
As much as I enjoyed the technical aspect of things, I knew we didn't have much time. Well, what are we standing around here for? I walked ahead, but James suggested we go for the security room first. We followed him as we snuck past a guard. I knew exactly what to do, but James whispered, I'll handle this. Walking behind as the guard's back was turned, he hit him swiftly with the back of his gun. I thought you said no killing! I didn't kill him, you doggo. I just knocked him out. I'll keep watch here. You go do what you need to do. What did you call me? Legion, let's go. We don't have any time to waste. Sophie said. A lot of the walls were empty. They were probably out looking for us. I walked slowly until I reached a door. One that made me suddenly stop. I was familiar with the voices coming through the other side. They were those evil white coats. I leaned my ear against the door and listened. I was familiar with the voices. Korvek, Wolski and Eisenhower were all there. We have to find those dogs, said Korvek. We will. Dead or alive, Eisenhower answered back. Not that any of those soldiers would have any luck killing Legion. We need him back alive. He's much too valuable. If information came out as to the experimentation of these dogs, it could ruin us. Wolski spoke up. We are doing this for the benefit of mankind. I heard Eisenhower shout back. The world won't see it that way. The other dogs can be destroyed on sight, or maybe the help of the public can do it for us. What the hell do you mean by that? Eisenhower responded, in a tone that seemed confused. I have already reached out to the media and told them we were treating animals that carried the bubonic plague. You have to be kidding me. The plague nearly took out half of the world's population at one point. That's right, Wolski. The threat of such an event happening again will create panic among the public. Our escaped canines will either be caught or killed by tomorrow morning. The other three I'm not concerned about. It's Legion that poses a threat. You're the one that worked on Legion the most, Korvek. You would know how to stop him. There's only one way at this point to stop Legion. By now, he is a disease spread upon the world, and I have the cure. So, you're saying we couldn't send in the military and have to wipe them out? Gentlemen, Legion is more powerful than you could imagine. We're talking Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street kind of shit. He can't be killed by a bullet, and once he realizes this, we're all in a world of trouble. I'm not following. How does Legion even have all of these powers? The other dogs were supposed to be prototypes for him then disposed of. He should only have the same abilities the other dogs possess. So what the hell did you do to him? My fellow doctors, we're at war. I did what was necessary. I gave him some other abilities to assure we won't lose. Then explain what you did, so we know how to resolve this. Every time Legion is killed, his body will advert his timeline. He'll be shifted back to the moment before he was killed. His body has mastered time manipulation to ensure he survives. So he can die, he just won't stay dead. What if we destroy the body? shouted Worski. It won't matter. You can't destroy the events of yesterday because that's a moment in time that has already transpired. He would only have to go back before the moment his body was destroyed. This can't be real. Can he time travel whenever he wants to?
No. Only after his death occurs, and only between a one to five minute span of time. How the hell does he control what moment of time he appears in? After he's killed, his soul enters the axis of time. He'll have an option to different paths, windows, or a better way to put it, portals back into our world. And I thought Frankenstein's monster was terrifying. You've truly gone mad. This wasn't part of the project. Relax. He can still be stopped, but we must find him. If we can give him a dose of memory suppressors, he won't be able to use any of his powers. That will shut off a function of his mind that lets him wield his abilities. It takes a while for the suppressors to take effect, however. They don't work instantaneously. At least it seems you have a contingency plan in case that damn dog goes ballistic. Legion hasn't had any medicine in quite some time. He should be concerning for all of you. His mind is fragmenting. Legion is going to become psychotic and kill everything around him, even his friends. Like some kind of war machine, he will only be driven by causing death. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. And what's that? Legion is not man's best friend. As I slowly walked away from the door, there was a wave of mixed emotions entering my mind. Kulvik, that son of a bitch had to be lying. I would never hurt my friends. If what he was saying was even a little true, I was all kinds of fucked up. I couldn't stop myself from shaking. Well, what did he say? Asked Hatch. Not a thing. Not a damn thing. <laughs>